We are here at the Presidential Election Petition Tribunal where the five-man panel is about to adopt the final argument of all the parties involved. Atiku Abubakar of the PDP is challenging the outcome of the February 23 presidential elections. And of course, he did deliver a 43-pager of his final argument just on 14th of August. Of course, Buhari's team, APC team, INEC team have also submitted theirs and the panel today is about to adopt all these arguments. To talk more about this and a whole lot of other issues involved, I am standing with Tunde Oyeshino. He is, as a matter of fact, the head of the Judiciary Correspondence here in Abuja, and he is a lawyer. Thanks for talking to Roots TV Nigeria. Thank you very much. So what are your thoughts? Let's start with Atiku Abubakar's final argument. He made a lot of um, 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 he made a lot of allegations and he has brought his argument. What do you think about his argument? Well, uh, the crooks of uh, Atiku's argument, uh, after calling about 62 witnesses uh, uh, in his final written address, he is uh, telling the tribunal that with the evidence of the 62 witnesses he had called, he had been able to establish three facts. The first fact was that uh, INEC transmitted result electronically from what part of uh, his witnesses said during their testimony. And secondly was that uh, at, uh, the President Muhammad Buhari did not submit any academic qualification, any certificate with the form they submitted to INEC. And the third issue he raised in his final written address was that he was telling the tribunal that he had been able to prove that some results was doctored, was doctored to favor President Muhammad Buhari. Those are the three grounds in, in which Atiku premised his final written address. And for, for the camp of the President Muhammad Buhari, the APC and INEC, they, they were saying that the petitioners have not been able to prove evidentially their case at the tribunal. Or, or on the ground of the electronic server, they were, they, 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 no, they didn't call much witnesses. And uh, they were saying in their final written address that uh, it, was, it was submitted during uh, evidence that uh, the, uh, the chairman of INEC in one of the press conference stated that they would not be able to use server because of the way it is at the moment. They were hanging on that. And they were also saying that uh, in the first place, the tribunal should not even hear the petition of Atiku Abubakar. Why? Because he's not a Nigerian. Mm. They are claiming he is a Cameroonian. Mm. So in mm. the first place, he's not even qualified to contest, let alone bring in a petition to the court. And they were also insisting that President Muhammad Buhari is academically qualified contest. So in whole, they were urging the tribunal to dismiss the petition of Atiku, Abubakar and PDP in its entirety for lack of evidential proof. At the moment, we know that the Supreme Court has actually uh, dismissed Atiku's application to issue them access into the server, upholding what the tribunal had ruled uh, some time ago. How do you see that playing out here? Do you think, you, because uh, this was majorly one of the major, the basis for which Atiku Abubakar is challenging uh, this elections. With that happening at the Supreme Court, how do you see it playing out here? Well, if you listen to what the counsel to Atiku Abubakar at the Supreme Court yesterday said, Eita Ojegede, senior advocate, of Nigeria. He said they had envisaged such type of judgment and because of that they have tied their hand while they were presenting their petition at the tribunal. So I want to believe they have taken into consideration that the Supreme Court might dismiss that application when they get there and I want to believe at the tribunal here they might have tied all hands to make sure that they present their case beyond reasonable doubt and I even think beyond the server issue the issue of academic qualification exactly. has much more weight. As a matter of fact I was even about to come to that even though the President Buhari and INEC uh, especially INEC is saying that look this was a pre-election issue as a matter of fact if you felt that he did not submit academic qualifications you should have brought that matter up before the elections however Ever. Even their own, even President Buhari's own um, witnesses somehow did counter each other when it came to his uh, qualifications, his WIAC result, his Cambridge result, that has even led for, to some people petitioning Cambridge and the UK police to indict Abakiari on this matter. So how do you think, you said it's weighty, in, in, in this situation, how do you think it can play out to the favor of uh, at the Atiku camp? Well, uh, uh, everything will be passed to the table of the five-man panel. We can't 
and preempt them. Uh, the matter is before them. Do you think it's weighty enough to make any sort of impact? Well, well personally, to me, from my own thinking and by my own thinking, I, I think the issue of qualification is a bit more weighty because nothing, ca something cannot be built on nothing. If you don't have the qualification to contest in the first place, even after you might have contested, it, it, it still amounts to nullity. Mm -hmm. Now let's also talk about the fact that billions of Naira was, you know, allotted, budgeted for this said server, which is said to not exist at this moment. First of all, do you think that will play out in the decision to be made? Secondly, even after the tribunal, do you see a possibility where some petitioners could take I like to court to say, explain to us what happened to all of this money if you say a server did not exist? Now, th there are two things involved here. One, non-usage of server and the allocation of billions of naira for the server. Now, uh, one, uh, the issue of the server is not contained in the Electoral Act. So even if it is used, as far as the Electoral Act do not uh, do not recognize it. We, the law is not all about. Uh, it's not all about emotion. It's not all about what should be. It's about what the law is saying. So that is on one leg. The other leg is uh, okay. Some other people may come up after this tribunal. Of course, which I believe the issue of server might not in any way affect the judgment of the tribunal. It might not even work in the favor of the petitioner. But the other leg is that some people may come after this tribunal to take high leg to court that despite the fact that the huge amount that is committed to that server, it's not being used. That's another leg on its own. Interesting. And we are still here to watch and see um, what goes on. Well, this is basically um, an oral aspect of this. The big deal will happen when uh, the judgment will be passed, which is we are still waiting to find out which date that will be. But thank you very much, Tunde Oyeshino, for talking to Roots TV Nigeria. We are right here at the Appeal Court Abuja bringing you a whole lot more. Stay with us. Thank you.